Okay, next chapter. I'm going straight through the 50. Ancestral Tree, chapter 2. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verse uh, 1 and 2. But a shoot shall go out of the stump of Jesse, a twig shall sprout from his stock. The Spirit of the Lord shall alight upon him, a spirit of wisdom and insight, a spirit of counsel and valor, a spirit of devotion and reverence for the Lord. And that last part, spirit of wisdom, etc. That's really written for antiquity. They, they felt that spirits could enter you with certain attributes. For the most part, nobody believes that anymore. But uh, again, when the Spirit of the Lord alights upon this twig, it includes God. I mean, it could say that. The Spirit of God and God alight upon the twig. But he wanted me to teach it. Lift it out. And gave the Hebrew word ha means the and Moshiach means anointed one. And in Isaiah eleven, the anointed one is from the line of David through Solomon by covenants, and from the reference to the stump of Jesse, who was the father of King David. Isaiah 61, verse 1, with the descendant of King David, as the speaker says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. That's, that's the alighting of the Spirit. That's the anointment. That's the oil in a traditional uh, anointment. The descendant is known as the anointed one, Hamoshiach, for the reason that the Spirit of God alights upon him. That is the anointment of the anointed one of God. The drops of, quote, oil placed upon his head. The Spirit of the Lord God is also the angel of his presence. Just about inseparable. God is one. He created that angel. But, uh, they're always together. I, I've never seen them apart, but there is a scripture in the Hebrew Bible that shows that that can be, that they can be uh, away from one another. Isaiah, actually God, prophetically refers to the stump of Jesse, Father King David, as an announcement of the ending of the line of the kings of Judah whose last king, Jeconia, was banished and the line terminated from ever ruling over Judah again. That's when the Babylonians defeated them and deported them. The line of the kings of Judah is the ancestral tree of David forbidden to ever rule over Judah in Jerusalem. The tree fell. It's the only ancestral tree we have. And that's why we're talking about a stump. The ancestral tree got banished, tree cut down, stopped with Shekonia. The kings of Judah would be taken into exile and his temple destroyed. That he, God, would end that line leading just the stump of Jesse for his anointed one to be raised from. And that's the ancestral tree we don't have. But we do know David and Solomon had plenty of kids and wives. I know I am of that line and twig because the Spirit of God lit upon me and God is in the Spirit and He told me and He taught me this and He had me type this. It's God's words. Jesse could not fulfill the book of Isaiah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesse. Jesus could not fulfill the book of Isaiah for the reason his line of David is not from the stump of Jesse. The line of Jesus is from the fell ancestral tree of Jesse. A tree cut down. That's the first thing you see in the New Testament, book of Matthew. The line of the kings of Judah 
and then uh, into Joseph's, there's some kind of a lie there. And uh, then Jesus is born. The twig, anointed one. It's not a branch. I think it's a carrier that says the branch. He never shows up anyway. There's a lot to that. What you know, there, there's some things the prophet said that just aren't right, and that includes Ezekiel. Some the twig sprouts from the shoot descendant that grows out of the stump of the felled tree, a new ancestral tree. And what does fifty three two say? Verse two. For he has grown by his favor, or like a tree crown, or like a tree trunk out of arid ground. Just more the symbolism and uh, metaphor of a tree being used, an ancestral tree. This continues the symbolism of an ancestral tree. The man grows by the favor of God, like a tree crown, a dominant Tree crown reaches over all other plants in the forest, including the crowns of other trees. From a sinful man whose life has been full of pain, suffering, and sorrows, familiar with disease, that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, alights upon, and God's presence is always nearby to the crown of God's righteous servant, who is David. Oh, alights upon to the crown of God's righteous servant, who is David. His servant David, that's what he calls him. We call him Moshe, a shepherd. He, but he's also David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses. The stock of Jesse that has remained standing shall become a standard to peoples. Nations, that's the Gentiles, shall seek his counsel, and his abode shall be honored. That's Isaiah 11, verse 10. By oppressive judgment he was taken away. Who could describe his abode? For he was cut off from the land of the living through the sin of my people who deserved the punishment. That's Isaiah 53, verse 8. And his grave was set among the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no injustice and had spoken no falsehood. That's Isaiah 53, 9. Assuredly, I will give him the many as his portion. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. That goes on to say, for he was exposed to death. That's one of the reasons. This is the many made righteous. The many as his portion. Uh, Toby a Singer believes it's lampshades with Jewish skin that Hitler received as his portion, which really makes me think he thinks Hitler's the righteous servant. I, I don't, although he says it's Israel. <laughs> I, I can't follow it at all. The abode of the righteous servant is humble when the Lord cuts him off from the world of material things in society in Isaiah 53, 8, and he did to me. And in the end, the abode of the servant is one to be honored in Isaiah 11, verse 10. From a poor man to a rich man, with the many as his portion, the multitude as his spoil, and an abode to be honored. Can't wait to see it. And because it's in the Hebrew Bible and God says it, I fully expect it to happen. I just don't know when. It's been 16 years. Next up, chapter 3, the creation of the angel of God's presence. And this falls into my knowledge of heaven as Elijah. <laughs>